kind of a newbie. I'm one of the tech nerds, uh, but many of you know of me as a as a pack rat of Silicon Valley. I I, I, I archive and collect stuff, and uh, I have a big digi barn computer museum with a lot of stuff. And I love to tell other people's stories. And just to give give you an idea, when Dennis uh, unlocked the the storage lockers with the two with the archives in them, and she rolled up the drawer. I went in there and it's like my archive brain started to go. And the first box that I saw said on it, trips. <laughs> and I said to Dennis, we shouldn't open that box, right? Purple haze may come out of this box. And she said, no, no, that's Amtrak tickets and that's, uh, you know, passports and stuff. Oh, darn it. Don't open the trips box at the Leary Archive. But um, you know, just to give you ideas of some of the magic of, and the power of this material, there was another box we opened up, and in it was Tim, Tim's face, Tim's death mask. And many of you may have seen it on CNET yesterday, the story. And one day we were in the archive, and the, the death mask is in a Tiffany box. It's in the, you know, the Tiffany color. I don't know why, but there it is. Uh, and wrapped around it was this scarf. <clears throat> and Dennis said, this scarf's never in here. What's it doing wrapped around the death mask? We haven't been in the archives since. I said, I know. Tim's spirit sucked this scarf right up into that Tiffany box and wrapped it around him because this is one of the scarves he was wearing just before he died. I don't know if you, he, he had a jacket like this. So she handed it to me and said, it's obviously for you to take on the road because you have all these weird black and white clothes and today I didn't wear black and white. I thought I would sort of psychedelic it up here a bit. Um, and so I've been taking this all over the world. So when I do talks, I'm wearing this and Tim's traveling. So this allows me to, to, to tell people about the Leary Archive um, and take Tim with me. Uh, Anyway, some of the other boxes, some of the magic. Uh, one of the boxes that I opened up was with Lorenzo Haggerty of the Psychedelic Salon podcast, and I said, <gasps> there it is, IFIF, on this little sort of rat-eared folder. That stood for Institute for Internal Freedom. And we pulled it out, and absolutely what it was, was it was the trip report, it was the letters that they were sending from Harvard to arrange to fly to Mexico to try LSD. So this is really early. And then behind these letters are these grid pages showing uh, things like, it says, Ram, it says Alpert, who's Ram Dass now, 350 micrograms in notes. And it says Leary, uh, 450 micrograms and notes. I thought, this is their first trip. This is it. These are the notes from their first trips. You know, amazing stuff. Um, of course, Tim's ashes are in there uh, in Ziploc bags. You can hold them. Tim's uh, high, high school newspaper uh, is in there showing that he was uh, nominated the editor of the newspaper in 1937. His baby pictures are in there. And there's a letter from John Lennon in there. And it's, get this, for you Beatles, Memorial files. The letter says, and I can't do the live, you know, Liverpool accent. Uh, Dear Tim, thank you for coming to our love-in thing last week. You looked fabulous. And actually, there's a photograph of Tim wearing a vest, and that vest is in the archives. Him see sitting on the bed with Yoko and John. But he says, I'm going to write a song for your campaign. Now, it turns out Jim, Tim was thinking of running for governor of California. Can you imagine the world we'd be living in today if this had happened? Uh, we got Jerry Brown anyway. Uh, then we got Ronald Reagan. Uh, but it says, Dear Tim, I'm, I'm writing a letter, a, a song for your campaign, and I'm, come, I'm calling it Come Together. And I'm thinking, nobody in the Beatles do they know that it was being written for Tim Leary, this song, Come Together? So I just want to invite you to consider, if, if you're out there, you have a large property with acreage and you have spare buildings on your estate, what a wonderful thing to have to house this beautiful material that is so compelling um, and give it a great home and, 
maybe some of the other materials for, for this museum, and what better place in, than in the Bay Area? And is there anything else that we can think of? Oh, um, tapes. Really interesting. Boxes and boxes of reel-to-reel -reel tapes. Now get this, one of the tapes says, you can see that it says it's a trip report. Somebody's, is, is re they're recording during a trip, but it's scratched out, and right under the scratch out it says, John Coltrane, live 1959 in some club, and I go, oh no, you know, they, cl they clobbered an original John Coltrane. But uh, there's some amazing stuff that, there's lawsuits to the superintendent of Folsom Prison. Tim was filing lawsuits while in prison. There's a great big canister uh, wrapped in, in uh, leather uh, that is the film shot while he was in pr prison at the time. It's just amazing stuff. And he collected everything. I mean, there's tons of letters from Allen Ginsberg. And there's letters from the Pythons. He, there, there's, there's, it's amazing. It's, it's not just Tim's life. It's, it's the intersection of all of this stuff coming in and going out. And it's from 1920, 19... 19 to 1996. So it covers many, many eras and many, many people. And once we get it digitized and put up into an archive, you'll cross-link it and you'll actually, as Bruce was saying, we'll unravel not only Tim, but we'll unravel untold histories uh, that may help us live better in the 21st century. Because I think Tim's mind was somewhere out in the 21st century. Uh, which is where we are. So we'll we'll meet him. We'll definitely meet him when we cr create this noosphere of Tim in the future. So th thank you.